Hello everyone, I am back and the weather has been absolutely horrible this last week. It's been rainy, it's been cold. So I've been working inside. So let me show you what I've been doing. I've actually been working with my scanner. Um, I'm going with Charlie Strickland today to go scan uh, some headlight covers for a kit car. I don't even know what kit car it is, but he wants to 3D print <clears throat> the molds for it and then he can make the uh, plexiglass uh, covers himself. So that's what we're going to do. So in order to do that, I had to learn how to use the scanner correctly. So let me show you what I did. All right, so here is my scanner. It's a Shining 3D uh, Einscan HX scanner. Uh, it uh, costs $10,000. The software was another $2,000. Um, it's considered a mid-range scanner. They go a lot uh, higher from this. There's a huge jump. There's some uh, videos on different scanners that you can use, including your phone. Uh, the conclusion is it's hard to justify $10,000. It's worth the money, but it's hard to justify for a home user. Uh, the other scanners, the cheaper options, they just don't give you the quality that you need. So I tried initially using a laser scan. It gives you the option of using a laser scan or a rapid scan. <clears throat> I could not get the laser scan to work correctly. I'm sure it's user error, but I did get the rapid scan to work. The advantage of the rapid scan is you can pick texture. Well, texture not only means texture, but it means color. So what I wanted to scan was this model of the Simone Dusenberg. So this Franklin Mint came out with this and came up with this huge story about it being some car that was made uh, before the war and um, by some perfume magnet uh, and it got hidden or destroyed in the war. Nobody's ever seen it, one of one, blah, blah, blah. Come to find out the story was all made up by the makers of the model. They actually came up with the story and came up with the car design all on their own. This never existed as a real car. I would like to be the first one to actually, actually I think I'd be the first one to make an actual version of this. Um, we have an issue with the uh, uh, Delahaye that I was gonna put on the Hellcat. Um, we have to lengthen the chassis of the Hellcat. Uh, the guy's doing it really doesn't wanna do that because the Hellcat as it is, they took the body off of it. It's a running driving car. He kinda of hates to mess with it because it is a running driving uh, basically platform that you could put any body on. He would rather make a body fit the platform than to modify the platform to fit the body. So uh, the option then became, well, what else could we put on it? Uh, he suggested a uh, truck. I have zero interest in doing a truck. So I nixed that idea immediately. Um, there are some other options, but this is one of those options. But in order to do that, we'd have to somehow come up with how do we make something like this? So I thought, well, I've got to scan something. Why don't I try scanning this? What you see on here, these little dots, they are from the scanner. They're markers to help the scanner uh, get its orientation. Um, when I tried to do, scan this initially, it said there was not enough detail for it to keep track as you were moving around. So I added these little dots on here uh, so that it can have a reference. The key is you need probably three or four in any view so that it can see uh, in these three points to make a reference. So that's what I did. I tried to just randomly put them. The other downside is that where these are, you get no detail. Obviously it sees the, the piece, the marker, but it does not see the detail in between. So you need to make sure you put those somewhere where it's not going to interfere with any detail that you need. All right, I also put it on top of a box here to raise it up. Um, because I knew I wanted to get down on the bottom edge and if it was down on the table that's hard to do so by raising it up it allowed me to get the scanner uh, at level I actually went off to the edge here the other thing is you need to be able to turn it you can either walk around it which is a pain or you can turn the object so that's what I did I put it on this plastic sheet and that allowed me to and it's on this tablecloth so it allowed me to easily rotate it as I ran around and did the scan it is a bit tedious. It does lose track of position. It takes a while to figure out how do you keep from losing track, both between going slow and once it loses track, you have to get it back to where it can find its place, 
which means going back to where you were, it finds its location and holding the scanner in the same spot. All right, that's the background for all of this. Let me show you what I got. And here's what I ended up with. Now, all of these shiny spots that you see in this are those markers. You can see them right there and they're repeated right there. When you turn around to the front view right here, it looks like it has two headlights that are out of place. It's not. That is actually these two markers that I purposely did not put in the same spot because if I need to mirror image something, they would not interfere with each other. So I didn't realize it would look that way, but it does. So here you can see that I now have a 3D scan. Uh, and by using the texture, I got the color. I had to go in and cut away all of the extraneous thing. It is hollow uh, because uh, I didn't do the bottom side. I could do the bottom side, but I really don't see any point. There's nothing under here that um, we would need to duplicate uh, in our car since if we do it, we're gonna do it with the Hellcat drivetrain. All of that part's already taken care of. The other advantage of this scanner is it actually gives you dimensions. If I go over here to measurement, I'm not sure if I can do this, there we go. Oh, well, it wants to go back to uh, actually working on this, which I don't want to do. Uh, anyway, when I do look at it, it does tell me the dimensions of this model. So that's the advantage of these expensive scanners is it knows the dimensions, the scale. Uh, there's a board there that you use to calibrate it. You have to calibrate it periodically based on the lighting conditions and things like that. Um, so this was a, an initial scan. It did lose its place and it did make a mirror image of this off to the side. But when I went to the cleanup process, I just went in and deleted all of that. Um, when I first had it, scanned it, it, you could actually read the label off of this box. But of course, I didn't need the box, so I deleted it. Uh, the other advantage of having it on this box was there was a thin space where the wheels were in between the body. So by very carefully going in here and trimming that out, I was able to get a relatively good edge right here. So my goal would be, uh, I'm gonna talk to Charlie about this, would be to literally just 3D print this whole body or the pieces to make this body, the molds. He doesn't have the printer uh, large enough to do the whole body, but he does have one that'll do a two foot by two foot by four foot block. So we would do this in blocks and then uh, put the blocks together and make uh, molds off of the blocks and then parts off of the molds. But what I want to do is get this and see how close it is to fitting on the uh, on the body, on the chassis, as it is. Um, I do know it's going to need to be widened, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I took all the measurements here. Assume to scale. There is no scale on this model, so I had to assume a scale. Uh, and to do that, I assume that the wheelbase was the same as the uh, Charger or Challenger, whatever the Hellcat is, at 116 inches. So I assume that was 116. It says that this would be a 118th scale. That's probably not right. It's probably 124th scale because these cars were known to have excessively long wheelbases, like in the 127 inch range. Um, and when I uh, modeled it, looked at this dimension, it's a little too narrow. So um, what I will probably do is scale the whole thing up and then uh, adjust the wheelbase by um, adjusting this hood length. If you look, this hood length is really, really, really long. Um, and so let's say I need to take a couple of inches out of this. I don't think anyone would miss a couple of inches out of this length right here. Um, or even a couple of inches out of this length right here. So anyway, we'll discuss what we're going to do, but that would be my plan. Um, the next scan I do, um, I am going to, the doors open. So I'm actually going to open the doors. I can actually scan the inside of the doors, the interior. Um, this is a pretty accurate model. Uh, the hood opens, if I can get it to open. Hard to get it to open. And then this trunk area. 
opens with a spare tire. This is like, there we go. So there is the engine. Obviously, we would have a different engine. Um, so that's where I'm at. So this was a success. I did get enough of a model that we could 3D print this close enough to have something to start with. Uh, being able to scan this saved an unbelievable number of hours of going off and trying to convert this into something that we could make molds off of. So again, now we can go ahead and make the mold. It's not obviously 100% uh, there. If you look, it didn't do a real good job with the chrome uh, on the grill right here, but we could duplicate that. We just needed the basic area. All right, so that's it for right now. Uh, I'm going to go meet Charlie uh, to go do the uh, scan of the uh, plexiglass headlight covers and meet the guy that is doing that. So I will do a later, a video later today covering that. But I'm very pleased with the results here. Um, I think it's something that we can work with. And I've always said one of these days I'm going to make a copy of this car. Um, if anyone knows of someone that has actually made one of these, uh, in the comments, let me know. Because to my knowledge, I did research and I could not find that anyone had ever made a full-size real copy of this. Uh, the only thing I've ever seen are these models. So, anyway, that's it. Uh, like, subscribe, and like I said, later today, I'll do a video on us scanning the uh, plexiglass headlight covers. So, I will see you then. Bye. Yeah.